I'm Tony Shimero. I'm a professor of philosophy and psychology. I'm a philosopher of cognitive science. I try to kind of bridge gaps between phenomenological philosophy and research in the cognitive sciences. I have uh, done work primarily on complex systems theory and uh, some stuff about mental representation. And uh, in, in the philosophy of science, I've studied issues with explanation primarily and ontology. And empirically, um, I work with people who do research on social coordination dynamics primarily, and also artificial life and artificial intelligence. That changes every year, but right now, probably The Phenomenology of Perception by Maurice Merleau-Ponty. Um, I just feel like there's so much in that book that's so rich, and um, not only for philosophical questions, but also given its influence on a psychologist named James Gibson for research in the cognitive sciences. Because I'm a, a partly a psychology professor, my research is kind of designed specifically to kind of bridge gaps between philosophy and psychology. Um, so the work that I do philosophically informs the research that we do uh, in the lab and kind of most most recently, we've been doing research that uh, can help people in the physical therapy contexts. So I feel like that's a kind of pretty big, um, a pretty big uh, way in which this philosophical research has an effect outside. Also, because my, some of my philosophical and psychological research is about uh, the concept of affordances um, that has an impact on product design and human machine interaction. What's really great is the kind of way in which we are all kind of devoted um, in a way that I didn't experience when I was in grad school to the PhD program and to kind of working it to ensure the success of our students. Um, I personally feel like that's kind of my main job, and I think I'm nowhere near alone in our department feeling like what we really, what we are is a PhD program and what we do is work together to help our students succeed. I'm on the board of directors of the Institute for Research and Sensing, which we call IRIS, which is a kind of cross-university uh, uh, research and education program to do with sensing in all of its various guises. So that includes philosophical theories of perception, um, artificial intelligence, work on sensors, um, biological studies of, of organisms and their sensory abilities, and psychological studies of human sensing, and it's an opportunity for us to kind of train graduate students in an interdisciplinary setting um, to look at the biggest possible picture um, and as it relates to their more focused research with their mentor. Um, and there, are, there is a two-semester graduate course to do with that that some philosophy students have had the opportunity to do. And it has been, um, I think, really beneficial because in addition to doing academic work, the people in this graduate program work with industry partners in order to kind of look at possible ways in which their expertise could be important and influential outside of academia. I'm also a principal member of the Arts-Based Research Lab, um, which is run in the School of Design, Art, Architecture, and Planning primarily. But in that space, we try to do research that unites arts, uh, philosophy, the cognitive sciences, and neuroscience in order to try to think of kind of solutions to difficult problems um, that we think that one discipline alone couldn't access. You have to look at our areas of expertise. Um, and the primary, the biggest number of us works in issues related to philosophy of science. So if you hate philosophy of science, we might not be a place for you. Um, but we are kind of rapidly expanding into other areas like uh, political philosophy and ethics. And we are having a new hire in AI and hopefully ethics uh, this year. So we are expanding. Um, but you, when you're picking a grad school, you should pick it based on uh, the people there working in what you think you're going to be interested in. And for us, it's philosophy of science, philosophy of cognitive science, philosophy of biology, artificial intelligence.
So as an undergraduate, I took a course with George Smith, who's mostly known as a Newton scholar, uh, just a kind of survey of philosophy of science. And George is the best teacher I've ever had. And it was just beautifully presented every week and uh, really interesting material. And it, it definitely kind of changed the course of my academic career. I hadn't been thinking about philosophy of science as, uh, as an area of specialization until then. And it affected how I applied, what graduate programs I applied to. Well, secretly, I still want to be a baseball player. Um, I, but I, as an undergraduate, I was kind of deciding, um, and it wasn't an easy decision between uh, creative writing and philosophy. And at a certain point, I just realized that I was getting a lot more uh, affection by my professors for my work in philosophy than I was for my work in creative writing. And so I feel like the, my talents kind of made the decision for me. I don't watch movies as much as I used to, but I still read tons of novels. Um, and overall, my favorite is probably Pale Fire by Nabokov, um, which is the story of a fictional kingdom and uh, its ruler in exile um, in, in, in the guise of a commentary on a poem.